Hi, it's Mark. I want to do a talk today and I call it use it or lose it. And no, it's not a joke about hair on bald men, use it or lose it. But maybe there's a funny gag there. I'm doing this talk at the encouragement of a friend, colleague, uh, fellow public speaker, encouraging people like me to get active off stage because during the pandemic, opportunities to speak on stage are fewer and far between, but also to get more accustomed to doing speeches and presentations on a screen using tools like Zoom as I am now to present to people far and wide on a wide variety of subjects. But there's also something sort of in my, in my craw a bit this morning, not as something I'm angry about, but something I'm feeling strongly about. And, and I've been thinking a lot about th things we, we, we lose because we don't use them. A really good case in point that I think everyone could understand is getting points. When we use a credit card or a debit card or we shop in a familiar store, they all want us to sign up for their points program. We can redeem the points for merchandise or money or special gifts or whatever it might be that we're keen to explore. And I had that happen recently. I thought, I've got these points. I'll look and see what's new, what I could redeem them for. And I found a beard trimmer. So I ordered a beard trimmer. Now I get my beard trimmed by a professional who styles my hair. And I happily pay her to do that. She does a really good job. But I thought if I get the trimmer, which I can just redeem the points, for, I can probably trim my own beard. Because beard seems to grow faster than this long stuff behind me. So I ordered the trimmer. And I won't recount the experiences of trying to learn how to use this thing reminds me of why I get a professional to trim my beard because in the mirror it's fine to work on the one side but then you're working in reverse and it's backward and I I kind of botched the job but it was a, a reminder that we have those points why not use them and I'm thinking in the future maybe a, I'll redeem them for merchandise I really want and otherwise, maybe I'll join into one of those programs where you give your points away to a charity and they get to use them for things that will do some, real, some good for, for some people. That's maybe a better use of that. But this got me thinking, um, as has this experience of using Zoom as my recording tool for doing speeches and, and talks and, and augmenting my writing with some words and a face-to-face -face for me. I'm also using it now in business communication rather than sending somebody an email saying, hi, I'd like to talk to you or to introduce myself or to call and get someone's voicemail and just leave a message. And sometimes it's a friendly short message or sometimes it needs to be a longer, more detailed message, especially if we're trying to get someone to join in on some program or partner with us or, or, or be our client or for us to be their client. These things require more than a 30 second voicemail message or a two second email. Aha, I'm using Zoom. I'm learning how to use this tool and it's really pretty simple. Uh, I, I'm amazed at how simple and effective it is for recording. So I simply use this tool rather than only having it available to convene meetings or attend meetings, I'm using it as, a, I guess, a marketing tool in some cases. In some cases, just a way of communicating with somebody that I haven't seen for a while and I want to send them a message. And I, as, as I'm exploring this, which is quite new for me, I'm thinking of a lot of people that I have been in contact with not as often as I'd like, too often by phone or by email, just leaving a message. And now we have this really cool technology that we can all access at nominal cost and sometimes for free to use this tool to communicate with others. So that was in my mind. 
And I was out for a walk this morning, my morning walk. And as I was returning home to my building, there's a, there's a, a property nearby that offers assisted living services. It's for people that are elderly and ill, but mostly elderly, but they, they just can't live on their own anymore. And they need to live in a, an environment where someone is providing nursing care and food services and so on to them. And maybe in, in time and space, I'm not far removed from those needs in a few years, but right now I, I just walk by and admire the service that's delivered there and the good people who work there. But on the main floor of this building where they have a daycare and some other offices, there's a sign out front, day program for seniors, day program for seniors. And immediately that brought back memories for me, not so much in terms of seniors uh, in an aging situation needing a day program, uh, translate uh, air quotes, uh, park people for the afternoon, but it goes back to a lot of work I've done historically in organizations serving people with developmental disabilities, where one of the biggest problems was a day program where people would be taken, not for an activity necessarily, not necessarily for babysitting, but there'd be a TV in the room and there'd be staff around, but people were taken somewhere to do an activity more challenging than basket weaving, but not necessarily equating to work or school, that kind of thing. It was a, called a day program. And I appreciate that's probably the right name for it, to call it a day program. But it, it sounds more like a parking lot. And that's something I certainly like to avoid in my day. And then, see, that got me thinking some more. This use it or lose it theme. And here are these people that they're not using their day. They're being parked somewhere. It's a day program. And then the aspiring comedy writer in me said, oh, is my work a day program? Is my office a day program? Think about that for a second. We go somewhere to a place every day. And during the pandemic, often that's a, an office presence in our own home. But when we're back to normal, we go to a place of work and that's our day program. We, we get paid, that's how we earn a living. We socialize a bit, but basically there's a set of activities and we're there all day to do those activities. And then we get to go home. And every day, for most people in most work environments, it's kind of like a day program because they're going there every day to go through the same motions of the same things, the same tasks, the same anxieties, the same meeting stresses, the same both joys and frustrations with colleagues. It's their day program. So here's my thinking today. Why don't we change it up a bit? Can we change it up a bit? If our day program of how we work or do business, what activity we, we do at our desk or on our telephone or on our devices to provide goods and services to others, what are we, are we just parking ourselves in that chair every day? Are we going through the motions or are we going through emotions? What's the alternative to that? Aha, what is the alternative to that? Well, we can spend less time sitting at our desk and more time doing activities. We can do more work, whether it's doing our work in a different way, doing things that get us more physically active, because physically active body helps promote a, a more active, healthy mind. We'd be in better shape. We won't be sedentary. We won't be at our day program. We'll be at our job, at our profession, at our business. We'll be connecting with people. Oh, maybe connecting this way as I am with you, if you're watching this. Maybe we're connecting by getting out more carefully, we're playing safe. It's a, a risky time for health, 
in a pandemic, we should be vaccinated, we should wear masks and so on. But isn't it risky to just be parked in your chair? Okay, what next will I do? What task will I perform? Will I get up and get a cup of coffee and sit down again and continue with the afternoon of my day program? I think we all can be challenged. I certainly am. I'm glad I went for the walk this morning. I'm glad I went where I went for my walk this morning. I saw that program, day, that sign, day program outside the building. And I think it's great that there's a day program, a place to go for people who need a place to go. But let's think about those in our community, whether we're serving children or adults of any age, people of different abilities and disabilities and so on. Of course, we should always try to make them not a parking lot for people in wheelchairs in front of television sets. But let's look at our own television set in front of us, look at the person who's sitting there and say, Am I attending a day program today or am I using this time? Use it or lose it. We have health until we don't have health. We have something to do in our work or our business or our profession until we don't. And I think we need to use it or lose it. Use it every day. I think we need to be more creative every day not just in finding some cute, clever new way to use a tool, though I'm having fun with this one. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'm going to sign off for now. My name is Mark Kolke, and I'm going to get back to work, not to my day program. I've got lots to do. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye for now.